Welcome to episode 99 of I Thought I Knew How, a podcast about knitting and life and all sorts. I'm your host, Ann Frost, and this episode was recorded on April 2nd, 2023. Today, I am adding to the series of episodes about the different fibers that we knit with. This episode, it's time to talk about some of the synthetics out there. We will be talking about acrylic in this episode. I considered doing all synthetics at once, but as I dug deeper, I learned that they don't all have the same benefits and downsides to them, so I decided to break it up a little. I know many of you avoid acrylic like the plague and that that mystifies others because it's inexpensive and it comes in so many colors and is machine washable. So let's break down what acrylic is and how to care for it and the pros and cons of it and whether it's something you want to eschew or embrace. Before we start, another big thank you to my patrons over at patreon.com slash I thought I knew how. They fund the podcast. They let me bounce things off of them. They hang out with me online from time to time, and I enjoy the heck out of them. To learn how you can become a patron and what the benefits of supporting the show are, please visit patreon.com slash I thought I knew how. Acrylic fiber was developed by DuPont in the United States in 1941, but it did not have a sizable footprint in the marketplace until the 1950s. And from what I could understand, this is probably because DuPont was sort of slowly introducing synthetics to the marketplace. And they had worked through introducing nylon and polyester, and eventually they got to acrylic. Acrylic is a synthetic fiber made from acrylon nitrile, which is derived from petroleum. And there is very little acrylic production in the United States and Europe at this point. The vast bulk of the production of acrylic is now done in Asia, in countries with laxer environmental regulations. This is no small consideration as we are trying to decide whether we are going to use acrylic for our crafting, as there are real people with real families working in these factories and living around them. One of the final stages of acrylic production is the off-gassing of toxic chemicals such as propylene, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and dinitrogen into the atmosphere. Some of that contaminates the ground around the factories where children play and crops are grown. And I'm sorry to sound soapboxy about that, but having lived in an ACAN country and seen factories pumping toxins into the air above agricultural areas and the neighborhoods of the poor, and knowing people who have died of cancer and suffered from myriad other diseases throughout their lives, it really bothers me how well this reality is hidden from the people of the developed world. Acrylic was shown to be safe to wear by the U.S. government in 1978, but the production process is shortening lives in countries on the other side of the planet. Again, I don't blame people for not understanding the impact. We don't see it where we live. Even having seen it, I am guilty of not checking labels or making excuses for things with low acrylic content, but I'm resolving to be better. (sighs) I did not expect this episode to affect me (laughs) right off the bat. Um, We will get into the pros and cons later. I want to share a little bit more about the history first. Acrylic yarns are available from many different manufacturers, but I thought I'd look into one, the Red Heart Super Saver. This is the acrylic yarn of my childhood and early crafting days. My mother loved it, like many other crafters, because it was cheap and it didn't come in dye lots. All of the red was the exact same shade because it was produced in a factory using controlled chemicals rather than dyeing a base fiber that had been affected by sunlight and diet and other factors that can affect the final shade. What many people don't realize is that Red Heart existed for decades before acrylic was even invented, and the original Red Heart knitting worsted was a 100% wool yarn. It hit the market in 1936 as Chadwick's Red Heart knitting worsted. Chadwick's changed hands over the years, and in 1959, under the ownership of Coates and Clark, they introduced an acrylic variant of their knitting yarn. Red Heart was known for being a workhorse wool that was very durable, and consumers were untrusting of the original Red Heart acrylic because it was too soft. So the acrylic variant was changed 
to make it feel more like the hard-wearing wool version customers were used to. By the mid-1970s, much of the world was obsessed with synthetic fibers, with some designers and commentators assuming that we'd be wearing 100% synthetic clothing within just a few years. This perception, paired with the facts that the acrylic version of the yarn was cheaper and machine washable, led to the discontinuation of the wool Red Heart yarn in the mid-1970s. Pricing and PR, they get us to act against our best interests all the time. I really didn't expect to be this spicy so early in the episode, but I really... (laughs) I really am getting worked up thinking about the things I've seen with my own eyes regarding acrylic and uh, the history of this fiber. And again, I'm annoyed with myself that I'm not strict enough with myself after having seen what I've seen and knowing what I now know. So I'm hoping that you are going to stick with me as we go through this episode because it's very easy to turn away from uncomfortable issues. And this is a controversial issue in our space that we need to look at with open eyes. So I'm going to pause for a moment. We're going to have a song. (laughs) I've actually had this song waiting for a while in a folder that where I keep like potential songs for the podcast. And it hasn't really had a place until now when I'm feeling a little spicy. This is Ben Bostick with Feeling Mean. (laughs) I'm going to go take some deep breaths so I can carry on, and I'll see you on the other side. Tonight I'm feeling mean, I'm feeling mean. Tonight I'm feeling mean, I'm feeling mean. Tonight I'm feeling mean, gonna Tonight I'm feeling mean, I'm feeling mean Tonight I'm gonna pick myself a fight If some deserving dirt bag a black eye And if he swings at me Then I'll Suckers because tonight I'm feeling mean, I'm feeling mean, I'm feeling mean, I'm feeling mean, the mean is hung from me, and anyone's ever seen, and I'm the way of the hurricane, and there's 
okay, I had a knit break for a few minutes. I took some deep breaths. Let's carry on. We'll talk about the pros and cons of acrylic. It's hard to do a clear cut list with this fiber because there are a lot of yeah buts that need to be included to add more context to some of the pros. So let's talk about the downsides first because those are pretty clear cut. First of all, it doesn't insulate you when it's wet. In fact, once it's wet, it's going to adopt the temperature of the air around you, which can be very dangerous in some situations. Second, it can be kind of painful to knit with sometimes because it generally doesn't have much give to it. And some people even complain that it can wear a groove into their skin over time if they're using it for quite a long while. Third thing, these just get worse as we go on, guys. Third thing, it releases microplastics into water when it's washed. In one study, a piece of acrylic fabric released 730,000 microplastics into the water. That's five times more than were released from a cotton polyester blend and one and a half times as much as a pure polyester fabric. Remember I said at the beginning of the show as I started looking into this that, you know, different synthetics really behave differently and some are worse than others. Microplastics impact the feeding patterns of the base of the food chain in the oceans, and they can spread the contamination upwards, as well as just straight up starving creatures whose stomachs are full of these microplastics, and then they die. And then the next step up on the food chain doesn't have enough to eat because their food has died, and then the next step up doesn't have enough. And so it just goes up through causing uh, starvation through the food chain of the ocean. Fourth thing, it is extremely flammable. Extremely. It's not the fastest fiber to take a flame, but once it does, it spreads fast. And this is perhaps the most blatantly scary thing about acrylic, because what is the thing that you so often hear people say when they are choosing acrylic yarn? that they're going to make baby clothes or a baby blanket or a toy with it so that mom and dad can just throw it in the wash. In the United States, we passed legislation in the 70s that children's pajamas needed to be flame retardant. Why? Because consumers were so in love with all these magical, inexpensive synthetic fabrics and they were putting their kids in pajamas made from them and the children were getting up before their smoking parents were and would find their matches or a lighter lying around and start playing with it and end up a human torch before either dying or carrying on their life in daily pain with profound scarring. Now, you can't find children's pajamas made from acrylic in the United States. Polyester, yes. Acrylic, no. Again, not all synthetic fabrics behave the same way. They can get the polyester fiber to meet the government guidelines, They haven't been able to get acrylic to meet it. But we, as crafters, pat ourselves on the back for being so considerate of parents as we knit their children blankets and layettes and toys made from acrylic. Stop doing it. Babies are too small to be playing with matches, but their siblings aren't. Mom and dad sometimes go to a stove to stir a pot with little Susie in their arms. Stop making baby items out of acrylic. Use superwash merino or a wool that doesn't felt naturally, but stop using acrylic. Okay, (laughs) those are the clear downsides. Let's get into the supposed perks. I'll start with a few that, you know, they're pretty clear, pretty clear cut positives. And then I'll get into the ones that I dispute or that are perks only if you're looking at a tree and missing the massive forest behind it, okay? First of all, most people aren't allergic to it. Most, most people are not allergic to it. Second, it's color fast. And when you're making it, like I said, you can get consistent color every single time because you just use the same formula every single time. Third, the fibers can be made to have different lengths and thicknesses so they can approach the character of some natural fibers. That's about all I have as far as actual positives, uh, because as I got into other positives, I didn't find them to be very positive. Uh, The next point, when it's dry, it's insulating. If you like the type of insulation afforded by wearing a plastic bag, because depending on how thickly it is spun up and then knit or woven, 
It will not allow for moisture transfer and will just trap the sweat against you as you warm up. Or you might have some of the wonderful moisture wicking acrylic that will in fact wick the sweat off your body and into itself where it will then hold on to it because the same functionality that has it absorb the sweat from you makes it resistant to release the moisture into the atmosphere. It's not like wool that will actually take the the moisture from your body and transfer it to the air. It just holds on to it. Next thing, you often hear it does not need to be blocked. But I would add also, you cannot block it. Wool behaves like hair. It has very weak hydrogen bonds going along the length of it, and by wetting it and stretching it into shape and letting it dry, or by pinning it into shape and then applying moist heat, those H bonds break apart and reconfigure themselves as they either dry or cool down, which allows wool to hold its shape until those H bonds very slowly over time revert. Acrylic doesn't have that. You can wet it and stretch it into shape and it will spring back to its original form. If you crochet with it in the corner curls, it's going to curl. There are people who will block it by placing a wet towel on top and pressing a high iron to it. What you are doing in that case is a controlled melt. You run a high risk of doing an actual melt, first of all, and heating the acrylic too much and creating a hard, crusty feeling on the surface of it. But even if you don't overheat it, it doesn't take much to heat it past the point of structural integrity and you end up with a limp, lifeless piece of fabric as a result. And finally, it's cheap, but at what cost? Again, I'll point you back to my moment (laughs) at the start of the episode. Acrylic is yet another example of the developed world outsourcing environmentally toxic processes to the poor and the powerless. We do this with a lot and we don't have to think about it because we are protected from seeing the effects of it firsthand. But I know people who are close to me in age, who look 30 years older, or who have already fought off cancer, or whose kids and many of their playmates were born with mental impairments. These are real expensive effects of the manufacturing of these fibers that we do not take into consideration because they fall in the laps of real people who face these very real struggles, who live very far away from us and don't have the power to get the issues into our line of sight. But I am telling you now, and you now know, look guys, I don't want anyone to feel badly. I'm guilty too. I said already, I know these things, but I let them slide from time to time. I make excuses, but I need to do better. And I hope that if any of this struck nerve, that you'll join me in resolving to be better. And I know that financial issues are real and the temptation of a massive hank of acrylic on sale for a couple of bucks is huge, but we need to stop it. Acrylic has very few actual benefits and a whole lot of negatives. So let's talk about some ways to avoid it. But first, let me just remind you of a few of our sponsors. Knit New Haven is your knitting, crocheting, felting, spinning, and general fiber craft haven in Southern Connecticut. Check out their website for upcoming classes and pop around to say hi to Linda and her lovely helpful staff. They carry luxury yarns to workhorses, hand-dyed yarns, and Leica bags, notions and spinning wheels. They have it all. Learn more at knitnewhaven.com. The Morehouse Merino Flock Group continues to grow. Erin shepherds the flock through new projects every month to six weeks with helpful videos and in-person help sessions to get you from cast on to bind off. There are dozens of projects in the archive waiting for you as well. Hop over to morehousemerinoflock.com to learn more about this positive online learning community. I just got an order in the mail from Drops the other day. I picked up some of their ultra-concentrated detergent to keep in my bathroom for doing the odd bit of hand washing now and then. One pump is perfect for washing out a few things in the sink. I got the unscented version for sensitive skin because I'm a delicate little flower. But if you are so inclined, they also have their stain and odor formula and several scents available as an ultra concentrated pump. The order also came with some of their cellulose sponges for the kitchen and I love them. They are shaped like a water drop so you have a nice pointy end to get into small spaces when you're doing your dishes. Check out Drops using the link in the show notes. When you get to the page, sign up for the $30 off offer in the lower left corner of the page, and you'll get a discount off your first order of detergent and also help support the show at no additional cost to you. 
Many thanks to you for supporting those who help make this show possible. Okay, first of all, let's talk substitutions for acrylic generally. For those who are afraid of the fire issue, and rightly so, cotton is also quick to burn. So it's not a great replacement fiber for baby items and toys. The reason why you can find a lot of cotton pajamas on the market is because many of them have been chemically treated to help them comply with regulations. Opt for wool. A superwash wool will offer parents the ease of machine washability. There are even times when they can just spot wash and air the item out. Superwash wool comes in two forms, the type that has been chemically treated to remove the scales that allow it to felt, and the type that has a synthetic like nylon blended in. Both are preferable to acrylic. Nylon does have a lot of similar environmental issues to acrylic, I will say, and it will burn, but it actually pulls away from the flame and burns itself out. So especially when it's blended with wool, it is a safer alternative. Safer, not ideal. I'm going to say again, for baby items, use a 100% wool superwash. You don't even necessarily need a superwash. Way, way back in the day when my kids were babies, I knew a lot of moms using cloth diapers and they all had wool outer layers that they'd put on their kids over the cloth diaper, they would treat them with lanolin to help them absorb less, making sure that the pee stayed in the cotton bit. (laughs) But any that did get on the wool would just air out. They'd wash and retreat them every week or so. Don't worry about wool standing up to use by babies and children. It did just fine for thousands of years. And some wool just doesn't felt, though many of those are not necessarily the comfy wools you'd want next to your skin. So again, a super wash, soft wool, or a, a mid-grade wool for baby items and toys is ideal. Just make sure mom and dad knows how to take care of it. Second, addressing the issue of color fastness. Other fibers actually do pretty well as far as color fastness is concerned, especially when you learn how to care for them properly. I've already done several episodes on different fiber types and how to take care of them. For the most part, you're looking at washing your items in cold water, use mild detergents, don't hang dyed items in direct sunlight when you're drying them, and make sure your yarn isn't stored in direct sunlight. You don't need a sweater to be color fast for 100 years. 20's probably going to suffice. So let's get to the elephant in the room and talk about cost. First of all, if you have acrylic yarn in your stash, I'm not going to tell you to throw it away. Go ahead and use it. Throwing it away does nothing helpful except maybe cutting back on the amount of microplastics ending up in the water, and that's actually rather important. So maybe look for ways to use it that aren't going to require regular washing. Make a wall hanging or a wreath, which I guess is just a circular wall hanging. (laughs) Use it in school projects or for other things around the house when you need lengths of yarn make a bajillion pom-poms and string them together and dangle them in a window or a doorway. I understand the impulse to craft and not having a huge budget to acquire yarn enough to fulfill my impulses. That describes the first 25 years of my crocheting and knitting life. But there are ways to find more affordable yarns. First, Put it out there that you're a fiber crafter. You'd be amazed how often yarn will just come to you because someone knows someone who can no longer use their stash and wants to rehome it. Look for giveaway and free sites on Facebook and Craigslist and put the word out. Join a local craft guild. They will sometimes have inexpensive yarn sales where people bring in old stash to sell for a fundraiser. Big box stores do carry natural fiber these days. Sign up for their loyalty programs and plan your purchases. When you have a big project coming up, start looking for those coupons and special deals and buy the yarn in stages so that it's more affordable. Always start a visit to the yarn store at the clearance section. And rather than thinking project first, think yarn first. I have this yarn. What can I knit with it? shop thrift stores and antique shops. I still do this because I often find really good yarn that has been donated and it's super cheap and I still get a thrill from a good deal. But I also find it interesting because sometimes I'll find yarn that's been discontinued for a long time and I look it up and I, you know, fall down a rabbit hole learning about this old, old yarn. But aside from shopping for the yarn itself, take a look at the sweaters for sale. 
turn it inside out, look carefully at the seams to see if the sweater was knit in pieces and sewn up or if it was cut from a larger piece of fabric. What you're looking for is whether the seams have been uh, seamed or sewn or if they're sergered. If it's been attached by a serger, chances are it was cut from a larger piece of fabric. If that is the case, pass, because if you open up those seams and start unraveling the sweater, you're just going to get lengths of yarn that are as long as the width of the sweater. Uh, but if they were knit in pieces, like a hand knitter would knit a sweater, you could take that sweater apart and unravel it and use the wool for something else. This is much easier to do if it's a single color sweater or has just very simple color work. I recycled the yarn from half a dozen sweaters back when the girls were still babies and times were tight, and I was able to knit with cotton wool and cashmere that way. There are areas of the world where this is a common practice for knitters to do with their own work. You knit a sweater, you wear it for a year or two, and then you unravel it and knit it in a newer style. And on the other side of things, if you're listening to this and feeling very like, raw, raw, we need to do something, and you have a stash that is ample, Maybe be aware of the knitters around you and offer to pass along some of the wools and cottons and such that are just taking up space with you. We're talking about two different hobbies here, knitting yarn and acquiring yarn. If you got the joy out of acquiring a yarn, great, mission accomplished. But if you don't have time or inclination to actually use it for your second hobby, knitting the yarn, then maybe try a third hobby, gifting the yarn to people who would love to knit with it. Spread some joy. So <laughs> clearly, uh, this is a hot button topic for me, uh, but I think I've settled down some from the previous segment. We have some alternatives. We have some solutions. So let's have a song now that's a little lighter to enjoy while we knit a little, and then I'll be back. This is Humans Win featuring Janelle Belcher with Tiny Brilliance. Here comes the moon Held by my love To shine on you With a light that comes from above It's not the sun Not burning bright
a few more things before I go. In the last episode, I gave as much information as I could about the December yarn boxes and the 2024 Mackinac Way Through Shetland Tours. Because I am recording this literally the day after I recorded that one, I'd encourage you to go back and re-listen to that information as I don't have anything more to say about it. But it basically boiled down to more details are coming. And to make sure you get those details, follow me on Instagram, join the Facebook group, or get on the mailing list. Links to all of those options are in the show notes. Second thing, by the time this airs, we should know who the Shetland Wool Week patron for 2023 is. Very exciting. As I record this, though, the announcement is still just under three weeks away. Uh, Jolene and I were theorizing about who it could be this year, and I named half a dozen people, and she came back with one that I think is so right that now I'm just pretty sure it's just that person. And she called it last year, so I'm trusting her, but I don't want to say because I'll feel like a real jerk if it's not them. (laughs) One thing is for sure, though, by the time this airs, we will know, and I will have already cast on the hat. (laughs) That is all for now, lovelies. I will see you in a few weeks for the season ender, which is also the 100th episode. In the meantime, thank you for listening and knitting with me for a bit. If you'd like to support the show, check the show notes for ways to make that happen. Special thanks to my patrons, Knit New Haven, and Morehouse Farm for sponsoring the podcast. The show notes are also where you will find links to any reference materials I used as I prepared for the show, so be sure to check those out. Find me on my social media accounts as I thought I knew how, except on Twitter, where it's just thought I knew how. The groups on various platforms are all called I Thought I Knew How Podcast. Until next time. May you be blessed with stitches that never drop, yarn without joins, and plenty of time to knit.